Okay, so hello, my name is Marta Añon. I am a senior software engineer at Software Product Production Organization at Red Hat. And today I'm here to introduce to you a new project I've been working on recently, well, not alone, with <coughs> some teammates. And that is called Cube Archive, and it's meant to be used along a Kubernetes cluster. So let's start with the use case. Like, what should we consider using Cube Archive in our Kubernetes cluster? <coughs> Well, so the main use case is that we are running one-shot containers in our Kubernetes cluster. So let's say containers related to jobs or to Tecton pipelines or other pipelines, but Tecton are the popular ones, or similar custom resources. If we run this like at a large scale, this may pile up inside the Kubernetes uh, database, HCD, and this might cause problems like, uh, performance issues, and they might lead to a cluster crash. So we should remove them, but what if we want them to be available to be queried, like for troubleshooting purposes, for getting some metrics, for traceability, then um, we need something for solving these issues. So the use case is that we want to keep the cluster clean and performant while having these resources available. So this might sound familiar for those of you that already use Tecton, because Tecton pipelines have also another tool called Tecton Results that tries to solve this issue, um, but just focused on the Tecton resources. And although these ones uh, like the main inspiration for doing Cube Archive, um, Cube Archive wants to just address all the kind of resources that you may find into in the Kubernetes cluster and not just Tecton resources. So that's the main difference. Let's go with what is Kube Archive then. Well, Kube Archive is an open source tool that offloads resources from Kubernetes HCD database into a long-term database. How is going to be doing that? Is this storing the Kubernetes resources outside of HCD? pruning the content of etcd based on the data that we already <coughs> stored, and also enabling querying the data pruned from etcd through a kubectl like CLI. Like the idea is that the user can query the uh, resources the same way that they do with the get command in kubectl, but even with these resources are outside of the etcd cluster, uh, database, I'm sorry. So let's delve into the goals and the not goals. Of what does Kube Archive do and what does Kube Archive don't do? Um, so one important thing to mention is that it's meant to be a one-way workflow. That means that things in HCD is going to be moved outside, but not the other way around. This leads us to say that Kube Archive is not going to be a backup and restore tool. For that, we have other tools like the Valero Kubernetes operator. So Check it out if you are in, in searching for that feature, but it's not what Cube Archive does. Um, so also Cube Archive can print resources from etcd after they are archived. It's going to be a configurable thing, so it doesn't have to do it always, but for sure <laughs> it's the main point. And Cube Archive provides an interface that offers an integrated view of the resources in etcd and in Cube Archive database. So if you have some resources uh, archived and some resources that aren't archived, the idea is to provide a CLI so that you can get an integrated view of both of them. An uh, important thing to mention is that Kube Archive is not going to be a uh, um, logging backend. Like, it's not going to be storing logs. That doesn't mean that it isn't going to provide them. The idea is to integrate uh, Kube Archive with several logging backend systems like Splunk or maybe um, elastic stack so that we can provide them but not handle them like we don't want to reinvent the wheel and there are tools like that do their job like really good so let's just integrate with them so let's get with how does Kube Archive work let's build the architecture diagram step by step First thing that we need is a database. We need some place to store the resources that we are going to extract from etcd. Um, we chose a PostgreSQL database because we wanted to have both a structured and non-structured um, uh, type of data. 
So fields like uh, ID, name, namespace are going to be structured while the resource per se is going to be uh, stored in a JSON field. Now we need something to notify kubearchive when a resource is when a resource that we want to archive is there. So for that, Knative provides a custom resource called API server source in which you can configure what kind of resource you want to monitor, I um, mean, which namespace. And we also did a PR so that we can also say at what status do we want to get notified about this resource. So, and of, of course, you need also to configure where you want these events to go. And this is going to be a sync as opposed to the source of API server source. And this leads us to the actual first component of kubearchive. It is a kubearchive sync. So, it's written in Go as the rest of the components of kubearchive. And uh, it's responsible of receiving the events, processing them to write them in the SQL on the uh, PostgreSQL database and pruning uh, the resource from etcd through the Kubernetes API afterwards. Um, we have the writer, we need a reader, and this is going to be a REST API, the Kubearchive REST API, responsible for reading from the PostgreSQL database and also to integrate with the logging backends uh, systems. Um, it's written in Go also, and uh, we took advantage of the Gene framework, which is most, one of the most popular ones for writing um, REST APIs in Go. Um, as you can see, there is also an arrow uh, that connects the Kubearchive REST API with Kubernetes API, and that's because of the authentication and authorization middleware. Like, we wanted to have some authorization stuff, and we wanted to defer it to the uh, RBAC <laughs> authorization of Kubernetes. And for doing so, we used the token review and subject access review uh, resources from Kubernetes. Like, it's, this is the workflow. Um, we should receive a request with uh, authentication uh, bearer token. And with that, we create a token review to ask Kubernetes, hey, who's uh, the owner of this token? And, and what are the groups this user belongs to? And with that information, plus the resources and the namespace, plus the verificate that uh, the user is, going, is, is trying to retrieve, we create a subject access review to ask uh, Kubernetes, hey, is this user authorized to do this operation? And with that, we just authorized or not. Um, we want to cache this because it's likely that a user is going to be querying um, several resources in a short amount of time, like from the same kind. And yeah, that's it for the auth middleware. Next item is the CLI. Um, of course, user can also request directly to the REST API, but this isn't like Kubernetes API and kubectl because uh, the kubearchive CLI is going to provide additional value because it's going to also um, do requests to the Kubernetes API to provide this integrated view of the resources stored in its city and outside of its city. And final item, it's going to be a deployer. We need something to help us configure the API server source resources in different namespace. Um, we need something to reconcile the configuration provided by the user. Um, to configure the schema in the database, deploy kubearchive scene, deploy kubearchive REST API. And of course, it's, we want a controller that reconciles uh, some custom resources. This is going to be a Kubernetes operator. Um, by the way, side note, um, we are using Helm charts in the uh, development phase um, for integration tests and so, but we're working on the Kubernetes archive operator too. And this is the final state of our current uh, architecture diagram. So let's go with next section, who is already interested in QArchive. So we have one main stakeholder for now, and it's Conflux. So there is Ralph Bean, who did a Conflux um, presentation a couple of days ago. And yeah, it's uh, a tool for, um, uh, for building a 
software um, focused on, on secure software uh, supply chain and it's based mainly on, on Tekton. Um, so yeah, they're interesting on using these for their custom resources and other stuff. Um, when will we be able to use QR Archive? Um, well, we are still in progress. Uh, we are in the early stages of development, um, and we are working, currently working on an MVP. And uh, we are going to provide you updates in the upcoming conferences. We have been already accepted for the DevConf in the US that is going to be in the middle of August of this year. And we are also submitted to be in the KubeCon of this year in Utah in November. Um, yeah, also we submitted to be a CNCF sandbox project, so hope we'll be there soon. Um, where can I get more information about Cube Archive? Well, as it is an open source project, it's going to be hosted in GitHub. Well, it's actually being hosted in GitHub. And we are tracking our progress in GitHub issues. We encourage you to watch the repository and get involved. Yes, contact us. And uh, we are in the early stages, but we are really happy to mm, hear your opinions and whatever you want to, to say to us. Uh, that's all. I hope you, this has aroused your interest. I think we have not so many time for questions, but if you have something quick, I can try to answer. Well, so the question is, um, what is the additional value if I already have my logging backend system with the logs to troubleshoot? Um, well, the thing is that sometimes, I mean, for example, with Tekton pipelines, you can see what happened with uh, when in the process that Tekton, the Tekton pipeline wants to to run. But maybe you, the you you have a problem with the container and it didn't build. So this kind of a stuff is sometimes in the status of the resource, and this might be useful. So yeah, and you know, sometimes, I mean, logs are useful, but I think, well, I, ha I have worked with Tekton, and sometimes having the resources is also useful too to know what actually happens. We, you don't al always have everything that you need in the, in the container logs. So, so Yeah, yeah, that, that could be a, um, a use case, but you can have like, if you have a build system or you have custom resources with um, essential information in the spec, or you want to know uh, what was the workflow of different resources and you want to archive them in different states, um, I mean, you have that information in the resources and not in the logs, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> Happy to dissolve it. Anybody else? No? Nice. Thank you.